Ah, yes. Three count commentaries is on the air. We're going to be talking about NXT from October the 25th, 2022. It seems NXT got the, the kind of kooky energy that I like. It's kind of back. Well, at least on this episode, it was back. It still has some work rate stuff. Still has some weird gimmicks. But uh, the shock and awe of NXT. Seemingly back. You know, the what the hell is going on factor. Uh, NXT just throwing a hundred things at you at once. Yep, it's back. That's the good nature at NXT that I like. Let me just start launching stuff at your face and seeing how you react to it. It is what it is. I mean, it's NXT. Only part of this crap is canon anyway. You know, in like two years, three years, most of this stuff will be forgotten. So we must have just cannonball your face with whatever the hell we can get our hands on. So, um, I like it. Uh, so there's no significant news and notes when it comes to NXT except for, um, as we mentioned, the deadline pay-per-view, which will be headed going, um, same day as Ring of Honor, uh, was Final Battle? Yeah, Final Battle. Uh, there was some, well, I guess Shawn Michaels did a kind of a, a press conference, didn't he? But he didn't, he didn't really do much of anything in the press conference. In fact, um, I had to take a look. I had to take a pause, a little peek behind the curtain. I had to take a pause because I knew there was something in that conference call from Shawn Michaels that I wanted to talk about. And um, it was like a passing tweet that I saw that kind of stuck in my memory, but I couldn't remember what, exactly what it was. But now that I look it up, uh, this is the uh, the comment. Shawn Michaels says there was much more micromanagement when 2.0 started. He said that he can build a car the way you want. But he believes having all the tools to build a car the way he likes would do a lot better for everyone. So now I remember the comment. Um, the comment was basically, uh, before in NXT 2.0, you were told how to build a car and what tools to use. But now he can build the car however he wants. And um, it's kind of a metaphor, of course. But basically he's saying that the office micromanaged NXT 2.0, which is probably why it was so much fun is because, you know, um, but as we can tell, micromanaging isn't actually doing it yourself. It's basically, this is how we want things done. This is what we want. This is how we want it done. So it was likely a lot of the fun stuff about NXT 2.0 that we enjoyed. Well, at least that I enjoyed. I, I say we, because you know, the Royal we, um, was probably because the office was kind of telling him this is how things should go. This is the people we should be pushing. These are the kind of people we want to see more of. These are kind of the talents that we want to showcase. You know, that kind of thing. But since the office isn't really doing that anymore, he's kind of had free reign to do whatever he wants. And thus we got Quincy Elliott, uh, beating Zion Quinn. It's like, okay, somebody probably needs to puppet master a little bit of this stuff. Like, you know, there's some things that Sean is okay with, but I, I'm, I just fully believe that he's traumatized by big dudes beating him up when he was younger. So now, you know, we're not allowed to have big dudes anymore, especially big dudes with charisma. We're not allowed to have those anymore. You know, if you want to be a big guy on this roster, you have to have a zero charisma. I'm talking none. The closer to zero you have, the more likely you are to succeed in NXT now. As a, as opposed to, you know, having some charisma at least. But, um, I mean, it's nice to know that he's now got more control. But because we know that he has more control, we now know who to blame for some of the garbage, absolute garbage that gets, uh, shot at my face sometimes through the NXT TV screen. But also, he's, uh, He's a good judge of talent. I'm not saying that he makes 100% good decisions. He makes about 50, 60 good decisions. You know, like some of this stuff is really good. Um, definitely needs some work, but it's NXT. I mean, it is what it is. Um, he's kind of new to this job too. Again, he tried, he did his best in NXT UK, but NXT UK was a very, very, very work rate heavy program and almost nobody watched it and that was part of the problem you know that's <laughs> partly why you know the micromanagement needed to happen because he was running nxt uk pretty much on his own and it was excellent and in ring 
But that outside the ring stuff, there wasn't much of that. And now we're seeing the uh, the issues when you, they bring over the NXT UK talent. And it's just more in-ring stuff because that's all they know how to do. Outside the ring, there isn't much of anything to make these people interesting. It's all give them 15, 20 minutes to have a match. And then the match is too long. And sure, some of these people know who these folks are. But there's other people who are just kind of like, you know, do, I don't care about these people. I don't know who they are. So there's a little bit of that. Now, I do think I'm against micromanaging, you know, in terms of uh, uh, day to day, you know, but sometimes you do. There just needs to be somebody making sure we're on the right track and that we're not doing things that are too ridiculous, like bringing Donovan Dijakovic back. You know, somebody needs to be smart and say, you know what? We don't need that guy. You know, <laughs> so, somebody has to be the guy that says we don't need that guy, but. Uh, apparently, we don't have that anymore. They're just letting Sean run wild and play with these action figures. And it, it, it's not its not awful. It's not awful. But, you know, it's hit and miss, just like most wrestling shows today. But um, the fun factor of NXT was definitely more fun when uh, he was being told what to do. Uh, but, you know, mileage may vary on that. So, speaking of which, um, first match, NXT Women's Tag Team Titles. Uh, Caden Carter, Katana Chance, aka KC Squared versus Nikita Lyons and Zoe Stark. Uh, this match just basically shows you how big Nikita is. She's huge and compared to these other two girls. I mean, they, she, her having to sell for them looks weird because they're so tiny, but also they make her look really slow. And like the, there was a a spot where she they were supposed to do a victory roll and. Old baby girl was on the Keenan Lion's shoulders, like trying to get her to go forward. But it's like, I hate to put it this way because Nikita Lions is no elephant, but it was like trying to get an elephant to move. She's like leaning forward and the Keenan Lions ain't going with it. <laughs> you, know, like, you see how much, you know, she has to cooperate in order to this thing. Uh, she eventually rolled over, but it, it, it was a, it was a weird looking victory roll for a while. Um, they did the, the old dusty finish where uh, Zoe Stark actually pinned. I think it was Caden Carter that she pinned. But they said it was an unseen tag. Uh, therefore, they had to restart the match. Which was, oh boy. Wasn't a big fan of that. After the, after the uh, false pin, though, the pace quickened tremendously. And uh, the Keto Lions ended up being the one to take the pin with the 450 splash neck breaker combination. Um, mm, that one, that one sucked. Now they did uh, a segment later where Zoe Stark was extremely frustrated after losing. Uh, the Keto Lions apologized, but Zoe Stark was just kind of like, "How do we not see that blind tag?" and you know, talk about how lucky Caden Carter and Katana Chance are. It seems like there's going to be a heel turn in her future. Either she's going to turn on the Keaton Lions or she's going to turn on Caden Carter and Katana Chance. And um, I thought, you know, KC Square was actually going to turn heel um, after the after the loss because the loss was so sudden. Like the the original pinfall um, was incredibly sudden. It was a good clean win because it was like a straight up roll up pin. You know, it was great. It fooled everybody. Um, then they restart. Like, I don't see anybody that noticed this blind tag. Like, well, I'm pretty sure we'll be okay if we don't call the blind tag, right? But whatever. Um, the Keto Lion is taking her first television pinfall in a tag team championship match. Okay. I, I still don't see why we didn't pin Zoe Stark, but all right. <laughs> you know, uh, it is what it is. Can't complain about it too much. The match was solid, though. It wasn't terrible. Uh, some of the Keto Lions uh, striking spots can use some, you know, she looked pretty good when it comes to the striking spots. And because her opponents are so much smaller than she is, she got to actually, like, throw a kick. And they looked good dodging it. As opposed to if they were about the same size, it, it would have looked like shit. Because that's usually how these strike and exchanges go. When uh, people, especially women, are exactly the same size. Even if you know how to execute a punch or a kick, somehow you just don't, you forget how to in order to not take somebody's head off, which, you know, is weird. 
All right, so Ilya Dragunov, he had a promo. Talked about how Halloween Havoc was supposed to be his moment to fill the void in his soul of losing the championship. But McDonough stole that destiny away from him when he stopped that referee's three count. And that uh, J.D. McDonough was a cancer in NXT UK who that apparently needs to be cut out again. And uh, this was kind of a slingshot main event because it was not announced of Halloween Havoc. But okay, sure. J.D. McDonough cut a promo saying that um, he nearly didn't get out of bed the next day because he didn't win. But uh, he was glad that <laughs> Ilya Dragunov didn't win either. It said Dragunov called him a malignant growth, but it's more like Dragunov is the malignant growth following him around. And it uh, says that there's a devil inside of him that he can access. And this devil is going to make Ilya Dragunov wish he never heard the name J.D. McDonough and make him wish he never came to NXT. And this brought us to the main event, which was J.D. McDonough versus Ilya Dragunov. Uh, non for nothing, just a match between these two guys because they had a feud in NXT UK. Uh, this match was given some time. It was fairly physical. If you've seen these two guys work before, you know what you're in for. Um, definitely had a difficult time paying attention to this match. I just, I don't know. It's just, mm, I like both guys, but it's just kind of felt like, I don't know. I just had a, it was a, it wasn't a bad match. It just felt I had a problem fully buying in to, you know, what I was looking at here. Had a problem fully dialing in. But um, the finish was excellent. Um, J.D. McDonough uh, counters the uh, Tapito Moscow into like a neck crank, kind of. Uh, but it's like a full body neck crank. Um, because earlier in, in the match, they had did a spot to where Dragunov was injured, you know, injured ribs, uh, which were injured at uh, Halloween Havoc from the Spear from Braun Breaker. And uh, they did like a false... Uh, referee stoppage where they seem like they're going to stop the match due to that, but you know, Dragon Ball fought through it. So now you, he's get he's in this sort of body scissor, and his neck is being like twisted off off his head, and uh, he's not answering the referee. So the referee calls the match off. JD McDonough wins. Um, Dragon Ball is then carted out on a stretcher. So um, is this our way of writing Dragon Ball off? Like, what do we do with McDonough now? You know, can't tell me McDonald's back in a title picture. You can't do that. Where Where is he going? Where is Ilya going? And I think that was probably the problem why I couldn't get into it because I just did not see a future for either one of these guys in terms of where are they going to go. And that's been a major issue with the NXT UK guys since they brought they got brought in. Is they got brought in, fed to Braun, and then that was kind of it. You know, like, we definitely need more than that. So, I don't know what they're going to do with J.D. McDonough. What was the purpose of him winning this match? You can't give him a third title match, can you? You know, are you going to have him versus Brian Breaker again? I just, you know, keep him in that title picture? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, it's, uh, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I could pitch something. Maybe I'll pitch it later. All right, so uh, next segment, Donovan Dijakovic throws his T-bar mask in the in the fire. He should have just pitched himself in the fire. You know, the second coming isn't about retribution. It's about justice. You know, you know what's not justice? You being on my television. His voice coming through this TV sent my blood pressure up, I don't know, a couple of points. And I was like, I, I just, I can't, I, I can definitely wait to be bored. All right. When it comes to boring shit skin wrestlers, Chalkakovich style wrestlers, I can wait. You can put it off. It'll be all right. I'm okay with him not showing up. He can not show up forever if he wants to. But apparently, he is coming, so we're stuck with him. Anyway, moving on. Wesley uh, says that he never thought he would be in WWE, let alone be a champion, let alone be a singles champion. Said that the confidence from the crowd and some of the performers in NXT has inspired him. And that this title is validation that he belongs and that there is a place for him and that he was thankful. Um, this was 
it didn't come across like a baby face promo. It came across like uh, he was sitting on the uh, psychiatrist couch. You know, when you started talking about validation and, you know, I'll, this is it's a place for me. I feel like I belong. I'm like, uh. you're supposed to feel like you belong already. You're a wrestler. You're in a wrestling ring. Come on, man. Come on. <sighs> Sheesh. Grace and Waller came out there and things kind of mm, got a little weird. So Grace and Waller hates Halloween. Uh, says that he technically won the casket match. Uh, and that um, he had to fight in a casket match. But what did Wesley do? He didn't do nothing but climb a ladder. Said so that I climbed a ladder at Home Depot. Nobody ever gave me anything. So as he was, you know, trash talking Wesley, our truth magically appeared. Got the building shaking because he had an awesome reaction. He was dressed like the Joker, so apparently he thinks it's Halloween. And then immediately he starts talking about Halloween havoc. And everybody has to, of course, correct our truth because he doesn't know what day it is. <laughs> this is like year six of uh of our truth not knowing what year it is or what day it is or whatever. I can't believe they've had this gimmick going for so long of our truth just absolutely missing events coming out at all the wrong time, and it still works. Like and it's never not funny for him to screw up in a major way. But what makes it even funnier is his reaction to this. So he's told Halloween Havoc was three days ago. And he's like, my bad. And so he finds out Wesley is the champion. And he's talking about, good for you, dog. You deserve it. And then he turns to Grayson Waller and says, how do you do? And then uh, Grayson Waller is kind of, <laughs> Wesley informs him that he lost. But that's not even what our truth is focused on. He's focused on that accent. And he starts talking about he had a British accent and as called a mate, <laughs> which is interesting because fucking Australians are called your mate too. So it wasn't that offensive. <laughs> and once you also take into account that shit, Australia was a British penal colony. He basically is still British. <laughs> anyway, um, our truth, uh, started cracking on Grayson Waller about being in that coffin saying with the spiders I know he was in I know it was dark <laughs> so it was hilarious so Grayson Waller of course challenged R-Truth to a match uh, then said that he'll fight him next week but he tried to attack R-Truth from behind R-Truth ended up fighting him off uh, very funny R-Truth stuff I, I loved it R-Truth being on NXT next week is great you know uh, our truth is the kind of guy you need on NXT, man. He's he's hilarious. He's older, so you know. But so he has so much knowledge to pass on. But he's also beatable because he's not, you know, a a the toughest opponent for a, for a younger guy to work with. He's a good bounce back opponent for a guy like Grayson Waller. You know, so this ought to be nice. Uh, Malik Blade was nervous. Said this is the biggest match of his career. So Idris Face starts spitting uh, Eminem lyrics at him. You know, from Lose Yourself. It says if you only had one shot. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so Malik Blade, of course, knew this, this was uh, Eminem lyrics. But he was just trying to cheer him up. Trying to get him together. And uh, they decided to. That they had an opportunity. They had a chance. They could beat Pretty Deadly. So Pretty Deadly... They're backstage and they're uh they're talking they're they're, they're seemingly concerned, saying that uh these guys beat every other tag team, you know that these guys are they're fast they're incredibly fast and they work together great, you know and they're beloved by everyone they come across, and then they kind of pause and was like, are we talking about Malik Blade and Angel Is enough in it? Like no, of course they're talking about themselves, which is awesome. Uh, then they uh. <laughs> they did a side play check and decided he was going to go out there and have the match. Idris and Ophir and Malik Blade are defeated by uh, Pretty Deadly via Spilled Milk. This match was very good. It was a very fun match. Um, Malik Blade, <laughs> Malik Blade with the awesome athleticism, the uh, the helo over the top of the ring post. It was excellent. You know, it really got people rocking that he ended up doing that. Booker T. Uh, him complimenting Pretty Deadly by saying they passed the airplane test. They look good. 
<laughs> that if you saw them at a at an airport, you will want to know who they were because they're they look like stars. Um, so into the Sano family, Blade lose match was solid as hell. It was fun. Uh, they were kind of beat up and kind of disappointed as they went into the NXT parking lot. And for some reason, the NXT parking lot was very kind to Malik Blade and Angelus Anofe as Odyssey Jones, who apparently is still alive, pulls up with a truck full of women. Like, a truck full of women. And white women, too. I think there's like one or two black girls in there. But I was just kind of like... Wow, we just a truck full of women. So Odyssey Jones tells them, "Look, don't worry about that loss. You guys get over it. Hop in here and let's go party." And so they do. So that consolation prize was probably better than actually winning the fucking belts. But so at least we know Odyssey Jones is still alive. He's not dead, which is great. You know, um, it's great that Odyssey Jones isn't dead. He broke his leg, I think, almost two years ago. It, it was over a year ago, that was for sure. Um, but I think them as a uh, a trio could be fun. Because um, Odyssey Jones didn't have much going for him when he was wrestling. He was a big dude. He was coming along, but he didn't have much in the way of a personality. He had nobody to talk to, nobody to interact with. So now he's got these guys, and these guys at least have personality. Malik Blade, Idris, and Nofe have personality. I actually like them. So the three of them could be a fun little, uh, fun little gang, especially if they're going to be, uh, going around picking up chicks. What was not fun, even for the moment, was Quincy Elliott introducing Shotzi. I don't need Quincy Elliott to do anything. All right. If I was about to fall off a cliff, I don't want Quincy Elliott's hand. All right. He can turn around and sashay away. I don't want nothing to do with this guy. Nothing. Uh, Shashi comes out, she's wearing Halloween themed gear. Uh, and then she wrestles our, our dear sister, Lash Legend, who, <sighs> Lash Legend. This match wasn't, look, Shashi isn't the vet that everybody acts like she is. Like, she's pretty well known from her time on the independents. But if you watch her matches in Evolve and stuff like that, they weren't, they were not much better than her matches in NXT. And our matches on the main roster. She just kind of is the type to throw herself into everything. She's going to throw herself at it. You know, she'll figure it out when she <laughs> either hits the ropes, hits the ring, hits the floor. She'll figure it out. You know, um, it's that, that sort of, I would say Jeff Hardy mindset, but no, I think Jeff Hardy actually knew the basics. Shotzi wrestles like she has no conception of wrestling. She is like, is basically demolition derby. It's like roller derby to her. It's just crash against the walls, and that's kind of it. So, um, you know, Shashi can't really do much for, <laughs> to help Lash Legend get better. You know, it's not like she can pass down some kind of great knowledge onto Lash Legend, which is which was interesting because Booker T actually wanted to train Lash Legend and said that if, um, if he has some time with her, he sees some potential, and she absolutely needs it. I don't see why I don't see why they don't utilize Booker T a lot more. Like the performance center is great and all, but Booker T has his own little school. Especially if somebody's gonna be in a performance center for years and years and years, send them the fucking uh reality of wrestling for six months or whatever. I don't see what I don't see why you can't do that. <laughs> you know, like what's what's the problem? What's stopping you? You already paying Booker T. Just pay him a little bit more. And let him train some talents that he can handpick or whatever. And bring them out to reality of wrestling. Get them some experience. Last Legend definitely needs it. If you're going to be featuring her because you like her or whatever. She definitely needs this reality of wrestling run. That Booker T basically just offered her on television. She needs it in the worst way. And Booker T has some girls who are probably just ready for NXT. So, you know, send some Booker T some girls who are not ready yet. Um, maybe they got some personality, but not much on the in-ring stuff. And, uh, or maybe they don't really have much of either. And let's see what happens. You know, just do a little bit of a talent trade. I don't see why we can't, why can't we do that? I don't know. Maybe I'm asking the wrong questions, but, uh, Shotzi wins, which of course she did. At least the match was short. It wasn't too bad. Nobody died. Um, even though it looked like last legend was going to break Shotzi's neck at one point. Um, with like a hair throw, it looked bad, but 
whatever. Apollo Crews says that he's focused on becoming the NXT champion now. Uh, Grayson Waller distracted him, but he's back on task. It's going to be very interesting when Brian Breaker shows up next week. I got a feeling that he's going to get in the ring and then J.D. McDonough's going to show up and say that he didn't get beaten that triple threat match and he killed Ilya Dragon off, so he should get a title shot. And it's going to end up being Apollo Crews and J.D. McDonough. And you know what? It'll be fine. Uh, not going to complain about it, but I could just see it coming, you know? But Apollo Crews being sort of the next guy up, I think they basically told us that um, Halloween Havoc. Um... <laughs> Okay, I would prefer it if we had like a again. Brian needs a rival, like like somebody to actually get in the mud with them. Apollo Cruz isn't that guy. He's for starting he's a baby face. So if we turn Apollo Cruz heel, would that help? Still, no. He needs somebody who's going to be there all the time, full time, you know, to work with, somebody to build with. He, you know, if he's going to be Cena, he needs an edge. If he's going to be you know, um, Austin, he needs a rock. He needs somebody to build with him, you know, and they're not doing that for him right now. They're kind of screwing him. If he's going to be Roman Reigns, he needs a Bray Wyatt, you know. You, you need that. You need an arch nemesis. Um, but whatever. Uh, Brutus Creed was supposed to get five minutes with Damon Kemp. I don't know when this happened. Like, I don't, maybe it was on, like, the pre show or something. But, um, Brutus Creed came out. Uh, with Julius, Julius said that uh, short-term decisions may have long-term consequences for Damon Kemp. Um, but in as much pain as he's in at that moment, it would have been worse if he'd have failed at Halloween Havoc. Then um, Damon Kemp came out and said that he's not medically clear, but he still has five minutes of hell planned for Brutus Creed when he heals up. Uh, Brutus said that every day he has to wait is a day that the beating that he's going to give to Damon Kemp is going to get worse. And then they are summarily jumped by Indu Share, Sangha, and Veer, which beat the tar out of the Creed brothers. Uh, I like this. I didn't I didn't hate this. This is not bad. You know, um, the Creed brothers need a new challenge. Since they're not going anywhere, um, they need a new challenge. And so Sangha and Veer are, you know, a good pair of guys for them to work with. I would not give... This a straight up match yet? Because we don't know, you know, in Ivy Nile X, like why did they do this? I'm I'm guessing that Damon Kemp hired them to do it. I think that's a fair guess, right? <laughs> I think it's a fair guess to say that uh Damon Kemp hired them to beat up uh the Creed brothers. That being said though, um you really don't do anything by having Indu share beat the Creed brothers almost immediately. Um, I think that damages the Creed brothers, uh, but also you can't do it the other way either. You can't have the Creed brothers just beat them. Like, take your time, build a story between the two, and then when Damon Kemp, you want to reintroduce him, maybe this is what, you know, you go that route or you decide who's going to go over. But hopefully they don't decide, within, at least within the next two weeks, to just have this match and have uh, one of the other teams win. Uh, we we could take some time and tell a story with this one, right? Right. All right. So Toxic Attraction, they're hanging out. Uh, basically, I'm not going to go into any detail about this one. Outside of them talking to each other via, I don't know, is it FaceTime? Uh, and they're going to uh, be celebrating Mandy's one-year run as NXT Women's Champion. I'm guessing somebody's going to show up and put her face in a cake or throw her over the top rope or something like that. Hopefully, that's not Alba Fire. But um, I guess we'll have to wait and see who's going to be the lucky next contender for the title. It'll probably be Roxanne Perez. If I have to make a guess, that'll be my guess. My guess is it'll probably be Roxanne Perez. Um, <clears throat> which is fine because I think Roxy winning the title probably would have been for the best anyway. And um, she is... If it's not going to be uh, Nikita Lyons, I think Roxanne Perez is the second best choice to be the NXT Women's Champion. And I think it's time for Mandy Rose to cough it up, too, because the main roster needs Toxic Attraction. They really do, especially on Raw. Like, we got to do something other than damage control, for fuck's sake, right? We got to have something other than damage control to focus on, you know? Maybe somebody who can actually fucking draw. 
Um, <laughs> not saying that Roxanne Perez is absolutely ready. And since I mentioned her, we might as well talk about her promo here. Um, so Roxanne Perez says she didn't like who she became at Halloween Havoc and she felt like a different person. But she's not sorry for what she did because she found a belief in herself and she's got to stay true to who she is. So it's another vapid, empty, I'm just so happy to be here, you know, sitting on a psychiatrist couch uh, promo. God damn it. Would somebody please teach these kids to have some kind of character uh, motivation to recenter yourself after these feuds and after these storylines? We get it. You didn't really care for it, but you could let's go in a different direction. At least come on. They're making her sound so bland, so boring. Like we probably need, I don't know. (laughs) If Vince was around, she'd have to, she had to wear some shades. She had to wear a hat or something like she'd be so plain that he would just destroy her on the main roster. And most people would, most people would look at her and be like, she's absolutely boring. Come on, give us something. You know, you come out here like fucking Mother Teresa every week. I mean, just just smiling and happy to be here. Come on. Do something. You know, shake and coins fall out or something. You you gotta do something, goddamn. So, but um, I expect her to be the person to come out and challenge Mandy Rose. Um, And ultimately, I think she will end up winning the title. You know, that's just a guess. That's just a guess, though. All right, so now for the segment that threw the internet for a loop, the schism segment. Joe Gacy um, and the Grizzly Gun Veterans, I don't care what their names are in schism. I'll never remember it. It's like Rip Rip Blade or something like that, Bloody Jagger or whatever the hell. I don't care. So they're wearing these uh, masks. There's a smiley face mask, similar to what Joe Gacy wore in CZW. So everybody who thought, oh, Joe Gacy, man, he was so much fun in CZW. That's the direction they were going in. The entire time, that's the direction they were going in. So he's wearing these yellow masks. They have writing on them. And the masks have seven deadly sins on them. There's only four of them. But there is four of the seven deadly sins written on the mask. First is pride, which is Joe Gacy. Gacy talks about um, humbleness and unity and a togetherness is the greatest accomplishment um, that, you know, human beings can have. And that people should join schism or be torn down. Next, we got uh, greed, which was uh, Zach Gibson. Gibson talks about being envious of other people's good fortune. It says that putting there's a lot of people in NXT willing to put themselves over the, uh, over the greater good, and that if you ro- water the roots, there will be more roots. I'm um, talking about, you know, not being greedy, spreading. Um, then we got Wrath, which was uh, James Drake. He talked about uncontrolled negativity affecting individual and social fabrics, and that anger divides. Pain brings pain, but also love brings love. And I thought that was excellent. This is all very well put together. I like how they utilize the uh, the themes that was on the on the masks. Then um, Joe Gacy got the microphone again and said that schism has always been about people showing, removing their masks, showing who they really are. And then says that he's been asking us for weeks and weeks and weeks to remove our masks to join schism, to sit under schism's tree. And now it is time for the newest member to remove their mask and to join the schism. The newest member who's, uh, I don't remember what uh, she was supposed to represent, but she removed her mask and it's Ava Rain, the daughter of The Rock. This set people just off. There's a bunch of people who was acting like this was the worst thing that could ever happen to her because they hate Joe Gacy. Some people thought this was interesting. My interest is peaked. I was in that camp where I was kind of like, oh, really? Like, okay. It's a ballsy move. <laughs> you know, that's ballsy. So Ava Rain cuts her promo and said that the love and acceptance that Schism has given her uh, greatly kind of overshadows what the people's preconceived notions of what she's supposed to be. And that this family completes her. 
and they had a group hug and everybody was either offended and pissed off, which is kind of the goal. <laughs> or like me, I was cackling on, in the dining room <laughs> at how pissed people are going to be that the rock's daughter joined a cult making fun of liberals, <laughs> which is great. It's great. It's awesome. It fucking ruled. That's how you make a fucking impact, man. That's how you separate from everybody else. You know, that's how you separate from everybody else. What Solo Sokoa was doing was different, but he was, he moved just like the Usos. He looked just like them. Ava Rain is going in a different direction. She's on a whole different track. And if this doesn't work out, so what? It's NXT. That's what I meant by when I started this thing. It's NXT. Everybody who's flipping out about this, it's NXT. She'll be okay. She's what, 22, 23? She, she gotta be like 26 at the oldest or something like that. She'll be all right. You know, this is not going to end her life or end her career. It's not, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Who cares? This is an opportunity for her to do something different. And she fit the motif in terms of, Wanting to, you know, having society say what you should be, who you should be. Schism wants to remove that. Be who you really are. Join us, but you can also be who you really are. You know, and she wants to be who she really is. She doesn't want to be The Rock's daughter. And if you look at this, every single fucking tweet says The Rock's daughter, The Rock's daughter, The Rock's daughter, The Rock's daughter. I get it. I get that's who she is. That's how everybody knows her. This was something that was looking to change that. And I'm pretty sure I was going to try to wait for The Rock to tweet something or say something about this. But I I literally have other things to do. We'll address, maybe we'll do a smart tier segment or something like that when The Rock actually has a comment on it. But um, he's going to comment on this. It, it's he he has to <laughs> right like his movie literally came out on friday his daughter is on tv on tuesday joining a cult full of white dudes you know it's it's tremendous shit and it's great it, it, people are already fantasy booking joe gacy wrestling the rock like that's not gonna fucking happen all right <laughs> it's not gonna happen i'm pretty sure the rock is it wants to be hands off on her career. You know, I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to micromanage her career. He's probably not going to give. I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't The Rock that called the performance center talking about tearing up shit. You know, which, which is the promo that showed like a few minutes after this. It was like, we're going to destroy the performance center. How dare you? And then I was kind of like, what the hell's going on here? And then like in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, is that The Rock? You know, he must have found, he must have found out about this and immediately started making threats. But, um, nah, I don't think it's that big of a deal, man. Um, it's, it's fun. She's trying to find her own footing in wrestling and find her own voice. And I'm okay with it. You know, let the, she's a peacock. You gotta let her fly, man. You gotta let her do what she do. It's, it's fun shit. And if it doesn't work out, she could try something else. But it's a it's a it's a good start. I was actually far more interested in the seven deadly sins aspect to Joe Gacy and his gang, which uh, tells me there's going to be at least three more members. Um, which is one of them is probably will be Isla Dawn. So so far, because um, I don't remember which one um, Ava Rain is, we're missing Sloth, we're missing Envy, we're missing Gluttony, and we're missing. Um, uh, to lust, sloth, envy, and gluttony. I said gluttony, all right. Gluttony, sloth, envy, and lust. All right. Gluttony, sloth, envy, and lust are missing. Missing. I'm not sure which one Eva Rain is. Maybe somebody who remembers from the glow in the dark mask can remind me. But um, so we started looking at wrestlers who could probably fit those uh fit those motifs. So that's what we're waiting on. We're waiting to see um, who's left to join the schism. It'll at least be at least seven members. So uh, not everybody's going to like this. Uh, I had a ball with it. I like that you don't like it because that means it's creative. 
You know, it's not creative for her to do anything with the bloodline. It's not creative for her to do anything that is in the same lane as The Rock. She can't be The Rock. She's never going to be The Rock. You know, so let's give her a chance to do her own thing. Okay, please. She's a young person. She doesn't want to live in her dad's shadow. It's got to be very, very tough. Her dad's like top five most famous pro wrestlers ever, you know. So, especially in the modern world, modern day. And again, he just had a movie that came out. I think that's number one in the box office or something like that. So, she's really in his shadow. So, um, I'm sure he's very proud of her taking risks with her career. And um, going out there and having fun with it. All right. So, uh, after they shocked the world with Ava Rain, we just got Sol Ruka. And she's doing surf puns. Talking about how she's excited is how she she's just as excited as before she crashes a wave or you know puts her feet in the sand or some some nonsense. Anyway, um, Indy Hartwell, who's going to be her opponent, shows up and says that doing fancy tricks to please the audience will only take you so far. Um, I can't believe uh, Indy Hartwell is like a just a permanent resident in NXT. They just can't do anything to get rid of her. So Ruka de- uh, is defeated by Indy Hartwell. I mean, she lost her second match. <laughs> Second match ever against another baby face. Very weird. Uh, with a simple forearm to the head. They didn't really give Sol Ruka much of anything. They just kind of wanted to get this in the ring and get it over with. Um, after Indy Hartwell won, they, she was attacked. Uh, Vic Joseph immediately noted that it was Electra Lopez that attacked Indy Hartwell. She also attacked Sol Ruka and beat both of them up. Um, she has new theme music and she's not a member of Legato de Fantasma anymore. Uh, disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Uh, I disapprove. I disapprove. Look, again, even if you want to say she's not ready yet, okay, she's not ready. Put her in a tag team with Zelina Vega. You know, I don't see why you can't have both. Why can't you have both? I mean, shit, you need more women on this roster anyway. You need more women's tag teams anyway. Let's just go with it. So now she's in NXT by herself. To do what? You know, like the last year of her career has been Legato Del Fantasma. Now she has to start all over again. You know? I don't know, man. I, I really want to know the the reasoning why she was sent back. You know, like, what's the reason? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we just, well, I guess we'll get it eventually when um, something negative happens and uh, things start to leak out. Anyway, let's go back to that scripts thing because someone called the the, the performance center and left a creepy voicemail. My first response not only was that this voicemail is crazy, it's like offensive as hell, but who the hell's supposed to answer the phone? Like, who's going to answer the phone and receive this message about ripping NXT apart? Um, so, <laughs> uh, so, I love this. I loved it, though, because they ended one mystery, started another one, same episode. So, if you thought, okay, I know who's the new member of Schism. I don't need to watch this anymore. There's no more mystery to it. Nope, not done yet, because now we got we got terrorists making phone calls. You know, this guy wants to tear up NXT. And uh, their name is Scripps. Scripps. S-C-R-Y-P-T-S. So like Crypt, but with an S in front of it. Interesting. Interesting. Now, this leads to a lot of people to believe that this might be two more members of Schism. I don't know. I think it's going to be like, I don't, I don't think you need a hundred sort of stables or th- gimmicks that are kind of similar and uh, from but I don't know how different they're going to be from Schism or how similar they're going to be to Schism but Schism seems to already have a uh, terrorist cult kind of cornered right now <laughs> in XT you know um, and we're guessing it's going to be at least two people um, I know a lot of people seem to think it's going to be Vincent and Dutch I don't see why Vincent would be in NXT and the guy's like in his 30s, and he's been wrestling for a long time. Maybe, maybe Triple H, you know, wants the guy to go to NXT. I don't know. But I don't know who the hell even said those guys were signed. 
I know uh, Dutch was signed to WWE before, and he was released. So maybe that's the maybe that's the tell that Triple H is bringing back a lot of NXT talent, and he wants to give Dutch another try. And he just decided to bring Vincent along with him because he needs kind of a handler, which is fine with me. I like Vincent, but um, until they actually show up, it's just gossip on the internet. So, who could it possibly be? Well, there's tons of people in the Performance Center who have not done anything yet, have not shown up yet. So, it could be any number of talents that has not made an appearance on NXT yet. So, we got a nice little mystery here. Ought to be fine. Uh, so, Chase U. Uh, Chase University is the last piece of business here. Bodie Hayward didn't show up. Um, he was supposed to be there. Duke Hudson instead took his place. He starts sucking up to Andre Chase, even brought him an apple. He's sitting in Bodie's seat, even though if Bodie ain't there, then it's anybody's seat, but whatever. Uh, Chase ended up cussing out Duke Hudson for not taking notes because he didn't have a pencil or a pen or anything like that. To which uh, Andre Chase said, oh, so my lesson ain't good enough for you to take notes? So he cussed him out, and Duke Hudson smiled. He smirked. While getting cussed out and then apologized and said, I made a mistake. It'll never happen again. Then he stole a pencil from a black woman. Just like the white man. Stealing something from the black chicks. Look at this. She, he's impeding her education. It, we, we're, for starters, she out here learning false information. He's about here trying to talk about this Montreal thing. They're doing WWE history in November. They should be talking about the gobbledygooker. They be talking about the undertaker. They talking about Montreal. Come on, man. You better get that WWE propaganda dumped right into your brain. So I can already tell you, whoever that young black lady is, she about to get miseducated. Right? See, she needs some proper education so that she too can overcome the white man and become better at sports entertaining. See, that's just one aspect of of white supremacy. First, they steal your pencils and ink pens so you can't take notes and you can't learn. How you gonna read your notes if you ain't got no notes because the white man took your ink pen? Come on, man. Why they got the sister going back like this? They holding her back, man. Why they doing? Why they miseducating my sister like this? We ain't gonna stand for this. All right? My, My sister's mind is a terrible thing to waste. She already come from an underprivileged household, and now she got to deal with Duke Hudson, gigantic Australian, stealing her pencils and ink pens. What next? He going to take her notebook? He going to colonize her notebook? That's what he going to do next? Why is Andre Chase just sitting there letting that happen? Why is he sitting there letting this happen? You got. If you know better, you do better. I want my sister to do well at Andre Chase University. I don't want her to drop out. I have to be a gold digger. Listen to Kanye West all day and stuff like that. You don't want that. You don't want to get I don't want to catch sister listening to Killer Mike. I wanted to, to listen to Die Baby and a little Uzi Vert. You know. Like the rest of these geniuses out here, right? Moving on. Well, I think that was it. That was it, wasn't it? Yeah, that was it. Uh too bad. Uh anyway, NST was fun. They did a lot. Uh surprised some people. They brought Odyssey Jones and uh Electra Lopez back. We're still missing Saray. Where the hell is Saray? I have no idea. I haven't seen her since her escapades in NXT UK. They need to do like a Lost in London segment or something like that. I mean, at least just tell us if the baby girl got hurt. You know, where's the little Skype's Japanese school girl? Where'd she go? How you lose her? Did she, you know, do you leave her under the couch or something like that? Where'd she go? So, um, but overall, it was a pretty fun show. Championship matches were really good. Not thrilled about Nikita Lyons taking the L, but whatever. Um, so we send up some things in the future. So we got some good stuff going on here. The champs will be back next week. Maybe Rose will be in, will be in the building. So will Brian Breaker. So we'll get to see who their opponents are going to be for the future. Would have liked to maybe clear that up tonight. Um, which would have been more fun. Has some of the fallout for NXT Halloween Havoc, but also kind of start moving towards the future. Maybe we could have started a tournament or something like that to see who's going to face the, the women's champion or who's going to face uh, Braun Breaker or something like that, Fatal 4-Way, Triple Threat match or whatever. Um, instead, they tried to go with the unfinished business angle for J.D. McDonough and Ilya Dragunov, 
which is fine, except these guys probably needed a break. <laughs> you know, like we kind of needed a break from them, maybe build this match up a little bit more. But we don't know where they're going with Ilya Dragunov now. Don't know where they're going with JD McDonough now. It's like, okay, if he got rid of Dragunov, what's next for him? Hopefully, I pray to, I pray to, you know, JBL that this thing isn't going to go completely left and JD McDonough's going to be back in the title picture. I don't want that. Um, so, but maybe JD McDonough would be a member of Schism. You know, I think he might work as a member of Schism. He could be, uh, he could be, hmm, gluttony, right? No. Yeah, he's a glutton for punishment, a glutton for pain, right? He could be that. He could be that guy. You know, that would be nice, right? I don't know. Whatever. I'm just throwing shit at the wall. That's what NXT does. Anyway, like, share, subscribe. Thank you guys for your time. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. Mongo Slate. Best house ever, you daddy. <laughs>